Hi everyone, Alex from Beam is here, and the long-awaited 5.1 version of the Beam desktop wallet was just released. And in this video, we're going to talk about what to expect from this version, what will happen in the next version 5.2, what are our plans in general for the next couple of months of development, and why some features take longer time than others. Let's get started. So, as I said, the 5.1 version of the Beam Desktop Wallet was just released, and it includes the first of the two major features that were building on top of the Lilantos Mimulbulbu protocol that was enabled during the last hard fork. It also includes significant improvements to the atomic swaps by using the SegWit transaction to reduce fees and a completely new setting screen, and of course, a lot of bugs and fixes in the, our desktop wallet line. So the 5.1 offline transactions allow you to send funds through Beam without the receiver being online. As you know, Mimblewimble is basically an interactive protocol which requires both the sender and the receiver to sign the transaction before it can be sent to the network. So using the Lilantos Mimblewimble pool, we managed to create a scheme that works so that the sender can receive some specific offline address and then use it to send payments to, uh, to the sender without the sender being online at that time. When the sender comes online, it scans the blockchain, detects which funds were sent to it, and extracts them from the pool. By default, the offline address includes 10 payments, and when these payments run out, then the sender wallet can try automatically to get more payments from the receiver through our SBBS system. Of course, this will work if the receiver is online during this period, if the receiver is not online, the payments will just run out and the wallet will indicate the sender that now there are no more payments left. And then the sender will have to ask for a new offline address from the receiver using some external channel. Now in 5.2, which will be the next version, we are adding a new feature that is called Max Privacy, which is also based on the Lantus Wimble Wimble Shielded Pool. And it works very similar to the offline payments. However, the difference is that the max privacy transactions ensure the minimal anonymity set, which is agreed upon between the sender and the receiver wallets. And what it means that when you create a max privacy address, your wallet automatically requests some minimal anonymity set that it could accept for max privacy transaction ranging from about 2K to like 64K, which is the maximum size for the anonymity set for the Lantus Mimble Wimble Shielded Pool. And when the sender sends these funds, the receiver wallet cannot use these funds immediately. Rather, it will have to wait for some period of time until the anonymity set is accumulated and only then extract these coins from the pool and use them in any future transactions. This is the trade-off that needs to be paid to ensure for both the sender and the receiver that the anonymity set will be enforced. Otherwise, if the receiver wallet uses these funds prematurely, the anonymity set is actually smaller and then the attacker can assume that this anonymity set is smaller and use this, and we do not want this to happen. So when you use max privacy transactions, you should be prepared that the funds that you receive will not be usable immediately. The other additional feature in the 5.2 will be the public offline address. As I mentioned, in the regular offline transactions, there are a limited number of payments. However, what happens if you just want an address to receive donations to? You want something to publish on your website, and then the people, anyone, you don't know who can send you funds. So for this case, we create this specific public offline address. It is less secure a little bit in a way that the sender can actually see when the receiver spends the funds, takes them out of the pool. And uh, of course, no amounts or addresses are still present. However, since this uh, public offline address is a little bit less secure, we do not encourage people to use it in the regular offline transactions, but rather only in the specific case cases such as donations and such, where the receiver is actually not anonymous. Because if you publish your address, your donation address on your website, everybody knows who you are. The sender, of course, does want to receive anonymous. And this is why we're going to put this public offline address somewhere in the settings and we'll, we'll only recommend to use them in very specific narrow set of use cases. 
Also in 5.2, we will add atomic swaps with four additional cryptocurrencies, Dash, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, Bitcoin Cash, and uh, Bitcoin Gold, I think. And these swaps, of course, will also use uh, our new SegWit infrastructure and we will have reduced fees compared to the swaps that we have today. Now, 5.2 is going to be a relatively short version and we're hoping to release it in the next three uh, to four weeks. Of course, during that time, we will also release mobile wallet support for the Lilantus transactions. And in, in fact, the offline transactions are already built in the, in the mobile wallets and are currently entering the last test, testing phases and will be released as soon as possible. So what's going to happen next? As you know, Beam has announced its plans to build a confidential DeFi platform, and we have been doing that at great speed. So what it means in practice is that there will be Beam virtual machine, Beam VM, that will be integrated into the Beam node, and it will run our own brand of smart contracts. And these contracts will be then used to build the first essential set of applications. These applications will include Beam Confidential Stablecoin, um, DEX to allow decentralized trading of our confidential assets, and also some automated market making based exchange, kind of similar to what Uniswap is doing. So this will be the first set of applications that we're going to roll out and demo on this platform. And of course, to do that properly, we also need wallet support, which we will start working on right now. So on your screen, you can see some examples of the designs that we're currently working on, on how this might look like in the Beam desktop wallet, because our idea is to be able to integrate this functionality inside your desktop wallet. So you do not really need to go outside to other websites to use it. Everything will be available to you inside the Beam wallet immediately. I think it will take uh, like between one, one and a half months to achieve this demo. And then what we'll do is basically set up the date for the next hard fork in which we will uh, enable this infrastructure in, on Beam mainnet and allow anyone to develop new contracts and build new functionality. Of course, to use this new functionality that somebody else has built, it would be nice to have it inside the wallet as well. And of course, also it should, will be available through our web wallet and uh, through external websites. But to make this available inside the wallet, we're building now what we call Beam Wallet Apps Infrastructure. And basically what it means that you can create and run simple uh, web application inside Beam Wallet that are integrated with the Beam Wallet API and can thus receive and send transactions, of course, with confirmations and a secure and protected way. And thus you will be able to create new types of applications that communicate with smart contracts on the Beam chain, receive information, send information to the contracts, and thus extend our wallet capabilities. We're also planning to use Beam smart contracts to provide several important infrastructure improvements uh, the most important of which is the decentralized bridges with Ethereum that will allow us to move assets to and from Ethereum blockchain into BIM and then train the, trade them confidentially in BIM. And also we are doing the same for Polkadot. We're currently researching how to build Polkadot parachain using the same technology. And of course, BIM side, sidechains themselves that will allow to extend BIM ecosystem to different chains with different functionalities using the same uh, bridging technology. Now, in this last segment of this video, I would like to talk about Beam development process for each feature and why some features seem to take more time than others. So every feature in Beam basically goes through four different steps. The first step is research, where we learn how this feature is working and learn what we need to do in order to implement it. The second step is POC or proof of concept, where we build a small minimal implementation of the feature to see how to do it. And then the third step is basically infrastructure, where we integrate this feature into Beam node and usually Beam CLI wallet. Now the fourth step and the longest one is feature productization. And this means that we 
decide how to integrate this feature into our desktop and mobile UI wallets. We create the usability flow for it, the UI, UX, and everything that is required to make this feature usable and accessible to the end user. And we also build this inside our UI wallets in a way that doesn't break the overall usability of the system. Obviously, this is the most time-consuming process of all. And it, of course, includes extensive testing and security and sometimes auditing, depending on the feature. So this part is the most time-consuming, the longest one. And in several cases, when the priorities change or when the direction changes a little bit, some of these features remain on different uh, steps and do not really reach the final one. Like, for example, the laser beam, which is currently active on beam mainnet, but it was not completely productized. So you can use it through the CLI wallet, but it is not supported yet by our desktop wallets. The other example is the beam web wallet, which was created as a POC and then rolled as a testnet. But now to make it complete and roll, uh, release it on mainnet, we need to do significant amount of work on the usability, extensive testing, and of course the security of the system since it involves centralized components. And this is something that we yet did not have time to do. So if you're following a specific feature, you sometimes see that this feature is stuck. Usually this is the reason we have limited resources and at each step, each release, we decide and prioritize what is the most important for Beam right now. And obviously some features that were started and like created and built on either research POC or integration level do not necessarily reach productization and are actually postponed. We will get them on eventually, but you know, it's just a matter of order, time and prioritization. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please download our latest wallet using the link to the downloads page below and enjoy. I think great things are coming for Beam in the coming months. So subscribe to be in touch and get you know, immediate updates when something interesting is happening. Thanks and have a great day.